Hey y'all, in today's video, I'm going to be showing y'all how to do a braid pattern for a traditional leave out sewing or you part wig ending with one ending braid. Okay, so jumping straight into this tutorial, y'all see I'm going ahead and unraveling the hair. She does have a blunt cut, so please keep that in mind um, throughout this video as I will mention certain um, aspects when doing the braid pattern. But yes, um, she does have a little bit of new growth and here and hair is pretty much heat trained. So yeah, so jumping straight into it. The first thing I'm going to do, and we are installing a U-part wig, is um section out how much hair I want to be left out. I do use my index and both my middle finger to use as guide of how much hair I do want to be left out because I feel like that is a pretty good amount to make sure you know obviously all tracks are being covered. So I am going to um, part that out. That's as far as the thickness and as far as how back the part does go. I do do it to right about where the crown is of the head like sitting right on top. You could use your back of your ear going all the way to your crown as a um, demarcation of how far back you want it but it literally is personal preference of how deep you want your part to be whether you want it short real to the back to the back it really don't even matter so right now i'm just perfecting my part just to make sure it's straight because we don't want no crooked braids and this is going to be in a leave out so not a leave out a middle part so you do want to make sure you have the same amount of hair um it's even on both sides once you split it down in the middle okay um here you see i have my u part wig and i'm just measuring it out to see if the deepness of the part is going to be good enough for this u part in particular but when i made the u part wig i did also use my two fingers as guide um and then it's kind of like how far back i wanted it so it pretty much did line up i did have to add a little bit more extra hair but once you go ahead and have that section out i'm going to go ahead and braid that out of the way and i just like to braid it forward just to make sure that um none of the hair is being grabbed throughout this um braid pattern you are going to see right here in the front i did add a little bit of hair um which wasn't needed for this particular install but if you are doing a sewing definitely um leaving out some of the hair on the sides will help to ensure all the tracks are covered it looks more even more natural versus it just being straight like a rectangle you can have um cut out little triangles on the side and it also does depend on the person's um hairline as well okay so y'all see we have it section out all nice and ready to go so now let's get into the braid pattern and y'all know i cannot do a braid pattern unless they have some anchor braids okay so that's the first step we're going to do is we're going to put an anchor braid throughout this whole entire head shape which is the um a u for the u part or the traditional middle part so and then we're going to do the size of the hair and then we're going to also do all the way going back to the neck and across to the back of the head so right here i'm just sectioning it out for my anchor braids you do want to make sure these braids are not too small but obviously not big as well because this is what the last track would be sewn on or the u part will be sewn in as well if the big if the braids is too big it's gonna make um the install look bulky um i'm also going to be fitting in braiding here i do have a personal preference what i really don't have a preference it's just depending on how i'm feeling um that day or whatever the case i can't even explain why but y'all seen i had started out braiding first with her actual hair then i went ahead and um added the braiding hair so each is on whatever technique you like that works best for you sometimes i don't like starting off with the braiding hair because i do feel like it be um tugging on the hair some so I'd rather start braiding off with the client's natural hair like y'all just see me do right here. And then I'll take in some of the braiding hair and add into it to make sure that um, the anchor braids have a nice hold. And the braiding hair does help with tension to release tension on the natural hair itself because you are going to be using needle and thread and the pressure. The anchor braids help with that and just to, you know, keep the longevity of the hairline, especially when you do the size of the hairline, the braiding hair is going to help to not make your hair come out if you're just sewing completely on you know natural hair like you don't want any breakage so the braiding hair is that barrier to help balance it out so now we're going to go ahead and do the hairline of the hair the front of the head like by the hairline the edges um we're going to take it all the way back behind the ear down to the nape so i'm just um getting my part together right here as y'all can see 
and then i'm also going to take some got to be glued gel and gel them edges back we is not braiding nobody edges we're not taking edges that's not what we're doing but what we are going to do is blend them so they look you know uniform and in place they don't just be looking all nappy and i mean it's not that hugs was nappy i'm just saying we just you know brushing them edges back okay so we brushing it back and i'm gonna go ahead and just braid going down all the way down to behind the ear and to the nape if you need to definitely add braiding hair as you're going along whether the person hair is shorter or they may just have really fine hair that you might need to add some more braiding hair because you know if you're doing a full complete head sewing it will help with the braiding hair to ensure that um the braid down lasts and it's not so much tension on the natural hair so definitely if needed use your discretion add braiding hair throughout this whole entire um braid down if necessary but for the anchor braids i do love to make sure i use um braiding hair especially if like it needs it use it so what i'm doing to one side you're gonna go ahead and do to the other so y'all see me do the same thing again starting off the little braid and then i take some of the braiding hair feeding into the braid and then go ahead and braid all the way down there's so many videos tutorials y'all how to feed in here that's really what the technique is once i instead of starting out with the braiding hair braiding it down i just feed it in after like the first two or three braids and then instead of just going all the way down straight to the back we're gonna take that parting section that we made and go directly across the back of the hair in the nape because you want to make sure you get in that as well so we literally doing a whole outline perimeter of the head shape which is our anchor braid so definitely this is the part where you will actually be sewing yo you part with to um to the braids so right here what y'all going to see me do is take um, both sides of the anchor braid i'm going to intertwine them so here is a slow mo clip of me intertwining both of the braids into one braid which is eventually we're going to incorporate in the rest of the braid down but i just literally took the one strand of hair and added it into one of the three strands and then go ahead and braid all the way down so for the rest of the hair we're just going to try to get each section to go down to the bottom if it doesn't i'm going to show y'all how to um make it work and get it into it all going down so this one went pretty far down it's not all the way down to the nape but it went down pretty far so i'm gonna just go ahead and start by braiding it and i literally like to take the sections and try to keep the sections as uniform as possible so like how you start is kind of like how you're gonna finish um, if you make all small braids, make them all small, or you can make them medium um, sizing, but definitely not medium and definitely not large because if your front, if your foundation, your braid pattern is big and bulky, how is your end style going to look big and bulky, okay? So we don't want that. So try to keep the consistency um, the same throughout. So in this um, section, y'all seen that I'm parting it all the way down and it's going all the way to the nape, which is a go green light because that's what we want. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and braid, just casual corn rolling back. And then once we reach to where the last previous braid started at, I mean stopped at, I'm just gonna unravel it just a tiny bit to make sure that the braid is not gonna be too bulky and I'm just intertwining it with the braid we have now. So the easiest way that I like to explain the intertwining to make sure that the braid consistency stays the same is take the three strands that you have in your hands and the three strands from the previous braid. Take one of those, add it to one from the opposite side, which is the current braid you have in your hand now. And then the last two ones, you could add um, into another one. And then as you're braiding, you can um, even out the, the thickness of the braid to make sure that the braid don't become like weird looking, you know? So hopefully that makes sense, but just evenly space out the amount of hair that you have in the previous braid to put in the next braid so what you do to one side you're going to do to the other so i'm taking that same technique and doing it right now to the other side so i'm um, trying to make sure all my parting sections and the braids is going all the way down to the bottom so right here y'all going to see me take this braid here the previous braid we just did i'm taking a piece I'm adding it to one of the sections and I'm going to take the last two and combine it to another 
of the three strands and then go ahead and braid all the way down if you need to as you're braiding down make sure you even it out all three strands so that the braid can be consistent going all the way down until it just becomes quote unquote like thin now till you get to the bottom of the braid basically so you want to just keep on braiding cornrowing all the way back to the braid and right here what we're going to do is add our um anchor braid this is the time we're going to go ahead and pull that braid all the way up add it into the anchor braid and then go ahead and braid down and but don't braid all the way down because you got this braid that needs to be combined as well so we're going to intertwine that we're going to take that braid put it in the back of the anchor braids because we want to keep everything flat now and then go ahead combine the braids together make sure that the um, amount of hair is consistent through each strand that you have and then braid all the way down so as you can see you wouldn't even have known that we did a little ducking underneath loop to um get it to be flat like that so for the top of the braid now what we're gonna do is the first two anchor braids that we had I'm gonna crisscross them and combine them to the braid pattern itself. So that's why you wanna also make sure that the anchor braids at the top of the um, leave out or whatever the case, the leave out basically, um, those braids are not too big because if they are, once you go to cross them, you're gonna have like a bulge. So if it's too big, it's not gonna be flat and it's not gonna look right. So I'm just crisscrossing them. And then as I combine that braid, I'm gonna combine this one. I'm gonna pull it up and then go ahead and start braiding down. And then do the same thing for the other side. So I'm taking the last braid that's ending. Um, I, it's already overlapped, it's already crisscrossed and I'm just gonna go ahead and braid going down. If you wanted to, or if I wanted to, I really could have made these um, last two braids into four braids instead of two, make it into four. But this wasn't a sewing, so it wasn't necessary. And she does have a small head, so again, it wasn't necessary. And also, if I was doing a sewing, I would have made sure that I added braiding hair throughout all the braids because it is a blunt um like the hair is cut into a blunt cut so you can see like there was some unraveling happening versus if you wish to you know braid regular hair down not regular hair but uncut hair freshly cut trimmed hair um so yeah the braiding hair would have helped um reserve the unraveling that was going on so favorite step my favorite step my favorite process my clients too is the dual grow to the scalp so what y'all see on me right here is take my duo grow mega growth i believe this dual grow too far it make a difference to each his own use the oil that you would like to use to go ahead and um oil up the scalp and then once you go ahead and do that and i don't like to make sure i add oil to the front like to the edges and stuff like that because it be making like the hair get stiff if you add too much too like why you got all that oil on your edges like that like that don't give so just add it to the part of the braid pattern food for thought okay you can massage some like if you want to concentrate a little bit put some of the oil on your tip of your fingers to get the edges but don't overdo it because that's how we be getting stiff and it just be ugly so go ahead and give a nice scalp massage you would as the um tip of your fingers not your nails just the tip of your fingers and massage it nice soft pressure you know scalp massages um helps with hair growth so make sure you know you stimulate that get that blood circulation flowing and then right here i'm gonna just go ahead and use a bobby pin if you wanted to you could have used um sew down the last end of bread if it was a sewing like i'm gonna say again i would have definitely did that step instead because the bobby pin is wouldn't be working for no sewing but being that we're gonna put a wig right on top the bobby pin works so i hope y'all enjoyed this video that was all and let me know if you have any comments questions or concerns later